Hey everybody, I want to look at one of the coolest new features in Logic 10.7, and this is the MIDI routing options. So one thing we can do on the M1 Silicon computers is run some of the approved iPad and iPhone apps. In this case, I'm going to load up one that's called Sequence. This is something I typically would have used on my iPad. It allows for this really interesting way of sequencing MIDI through these little creatures. So we can do a few of these and they interact a little bit. And if one's on the left side, it's panned a little bit to the left. They move around. Pretty cool. So what we have then is the ability in each of these to set an output MIDI channel. So this is channel one for that one. Let's see, this one here is now going to be channel two, right? And then our third one I just made, we're gonna make this channel three. So then I can create multiple instruments over here. Let's do, uh, let's see, alchemy. And for this, let's do something more bass-like. Not that though, like that. And then let's add another one. And for this, we'll do sculpture. Cool. On the first one, this is a retro synth I just loaded up for sound check. Let's add a different thing here. Calming bells. Okay, so the first one, MIDI port, once we've created or opened up that instrument, they automatically create a MIDI input for it. So we're gonna do MIDI sequence port with channel one for the first one. We're gonna do sequence channel two for the second one and sequence number three for that. So that MIDI port between logic and sequence was automatically created the minute we opened up sequence. Next, because I wanna actually have this tie in to Logic's tempo, we're gonna come into project settings under synchronization and under the MIDI tab, we're gonna turn on sequence as the destination and send clock information, which means I have to come over into sequence now. Let's open this up. And I already had this set up, but let me just show you this. The sequence output they're gonna send out notes. We can also do this with control, but we're gonna do notes this time. And then for MIDI input, we're gonna set the clock as an input. So it's going to receive clock over the sequence port. That means when I come in here and push play,
And one of the cool things that are really easy to do now with this is record all of that. Cool, and then we have this MIDI data, which we could use for almost anything we want. So it's a great way to interact with some of these other MIDI apps, which were designed for iOS, but now we have access to inside Logic. I mean, this is pretty cool. It allows us really easily to sign those inputs. So in the past, this would have been a little bit more difficult because every time we had this running, if I also had like another track here, and this one was set to, uh, say, my main keyboard, then it was going to overlap with it. It was hard to get those all separated out. Not impossible, but certainly hard. And now we can actually come through and do things which are combining with all of that. So this becomes my main channel. And that's reading the data that's there. But if we want to have this be live data, then we can do that as well. Just have to record our, all of our tracks. And you can connect the iPad and actually do this there and have the multi-touch experience. But if we don't want to have the iPad, then this is a great way to like kind of sideload it into our project without having to worry about the extra cables and all of the other pieces with that. So it allows us to have the functionality without necessarily having to have the iPad. Now, this type of thing does work with other tools as well. So for instance, we're going to not maybe do as much MIDI with this, but we can load up the Arturia ISEM and have Logic send out MIDI to this, or even have MIDI coming from this into Logic, although there's not a lot of really good reasons to do that. But these iPad apps expand what we can do in Logic, and 10.7 has made this even better. The next step, of course, is to be able to have Logic actually use the Audio Unit version 3 iOS plugins and instruments inside of Logic itself, but we're not there yet. The other thing would be nice to have is the audio coming directly um, over, which would, there's some ways we can still do that, but uh, it gets a little tricky. Right now, MIDI is the most reliable between the two. And as you can see, I didn't really have to do much setup much more than normal, and it just worked. I mean, that's great, and I think 10.7 is enabling us to do more and more collaborative stuff like this.